When we started working on the rust in the bilges, we figured it would be a few small spots and then we would be on our way to paint and interior work. But it quickly became apparent that a lot had been hidden and things weren't going to go as planned. Of course, what is left to do won't be a straightforward fix either. I'm Taryn, this is Logan, and this is Max. Our life rarely goes as planned, and this story is no different. But we are determined to rebuild our beautiful steel boat, even stronger than she was before. And we're bringing you along with us. After weeks of chipping paint out of the bilges, we're almost at the point where we're prepping for paint. So we have like a sump area that's kind of like three separate sections and they're really difficult to get at, but right now that's where we're at, trying to get the last of the non-adhered paint out of there to expose the rust and clean it up. That and maybe a couple more cubbies are pretty much the last of the air hammering that we have to do. That's the last of the needle gunning. While he's doing that, I'm working on sanding everything because all the bilges need to be sanded where they're going to be repainted. They're also really dirty. You guys can see right now, this is a giant pile of paint. See that? These are all chunks of paint that came off the bilge, out of the sump specifically. And you can see there that it looks like paint. And then you flip it over, it looks like rust. So this was painted without the surface being properly prepped. Um, we believe that they use grinders and wire wheels and other tools that just did not give that surface the right texture for paint to stick to it. And because of that, we ended up with rust underneath all this paint. And you can see, like, it's pretty thick. Like, it wasn't a thin layer of paint either. There's also a possibility that they painted over it without cleaning up all the rest properly, but like, yeah, it's everywhere. So clearly water was getting underneath there, or moisture of some sort. I mean, all moisture, I guess, is water, but you know what I mean. Like, it might have just been condensation. Um, but because the paint wasn't stuck to it properly, it got under there and it rusted. And all that was hidden underneath paint. So luckily we're catching it in time. And there wasn't much pitting, so we're not dealing with any major issues, but it's going to be a pain in the butt to have to repaint all of that, and it's been a lot of time in that, that bilge hole down there, trying to get rid of all that paint. You see? See how rusty it is? It's a mess. All right, so today we're trying to get our surfaces ready for paint. And there's two things that we're gonna do to get them ready for paint, depending on what's going on. So there's huge areas that have rust on them. Those areas we're gonna put blue steel on. And then there's also very small spots, like this big, that we're not gonna blue steel. Instead, we're gonna spot blast with that spot blaster that we have. And in case you didn't know, blue steel is a product that converts the rust to something that can be painted. It stops surface rust from going any farther, um, and it just makes it so that you can paint over top of it without there being an issue. Once all the spots are blasted, then we have to acetone everywhere that we're putting paint on. Then we put at least one coat of blue steel on, probably two, depending on how it works for converting and then we're gonna put our coats of primer paint that we put everywhere else on. And that should be awesome. The only problem is that this week is supposed to be really cold. So this is supposed to be the coldest week that we've had so far this winter. It's supposed to be like minus seven, which means that we're dealing with freezing temperatures and we can't paint when it's that cold. So Logan's also putting the heater back in so that we can turn that on and get the boat warm enough for the paint. But the paint probably won't be happening until next week anyway, and hopefully by next week it's warmed up a little bit. We'll see. It is our style to leave things till it's most difficult. When we had a warm, warm, warm winter this whole time, we're not ready for paint. And then of course it gets cold and here we are. So I'm gonna get at it. I got a lot of bilges to hit. Before paint can go on, the surfaces have to have proper rust treatment and have the proper texture for paint adhesion. Sandblasting everywhere that there's bare steel or rust would have been ideal, but we couldn't do that without tearing out the interior, 
so blasting what we could get to and then using blue steel on the rest was our next best solution. So yesterday I did quite a bit of blasting like you guys saw and then I got to in the electrical cabinet which is the spot that's underneath the settee there that big that big super uncomfortable area and I realized that there was a ton of stuff in there that I hadn't sanded yet so I've also got to do that today which I don't want to do at all. I really don't want to be in that space. It's super uncomfortable. Today Logan's going to go over everything that I've blasted and make sure that I didn't miss anything. And we're hoping that later today we can put some blue steel on stuff. But we'll see. Yeah, it's just a lot. It's a lot of work. But it'll be very nice to have it done with. It just feels like it's never going to end. So trying to keep motivated to actually get the work done is another struggle on its own. But. Whatever, let's get at it. So I've got the whole front of the boat sanded and acetoned, all the spots that need blue steel anyway, so that's anywhere that there's still like surface rust. And that means that it's ready to have blue steel put onto it. It's gonna go in this little cup, and I'm gonna use this brush to brush it in. So you gotta get it really deep into all those crevices, make sure that it gets right in there so it converts all of the rust. This isn't the ideal brush, It'd probably be better to have a little bit stiffer of a brush. Um, you can see here, Ooh, it's not super stiff. But I'm working with what we have. Logan is in the electrical room, still, still sanding stuff. It's a disaster down there. So this is interesting. Take a look at what we did yesterday. So let's look in this compartment. So you can see here all this black and kind of like bluish stuff. That is where we put the blue steel yesterday. So the color definitely did convert. It's there too. And then you can see here that there's still some rust showing through. So I coated all of that. I'm definitely going to have to put a second coat on because a lot of that still has rust showing through. So theoretically, two coats should be enough, but we will see today. Lots of rust showing still, even though I coated all of that in blue steel. But also, lots of it doesn't have any rust showing anymore. You can see that's all converted nicely. And most of this too. So that's cool. Very interesting. So yeah, today... I'll have to recoat all the spots here that still have rust showing. And then, can't really see, but in there, there's a bunch that I gotta do today. So I gotta acetone in there. And then use the rust converter. So let's talk for a minute about blue steel. See this guy? This is blue steel. This is a rust converting product. Um, it's pretty commonly used in Canada specifically. Not only with people that have recreational boats like us, but also for people that are doing professional steel boat work. From what we've heard from a lot of people, it works really well. And I know a lot of people have issues with using rust converters at all because there can be so many issues with them. So boats have been built out of steel since the 1800s, which means we have over 150 years of experience that we should be able to draw from to figure out what's gonna work and what's not gonna work with steel, especially when there are steel boats that exist from the 1800s that are still floating. But I think because steel reacts so differently based on temperature, based on salt content in the air, in the water that it's coming in contact with, in the oxygen levels, all of these things, as well as like what industry steel is being used for, greatly impacts how steel reacts. So if you look in the boat right now, I've got two coats of blue steel on everything from the galley forward. Which according to any research that I found should be enough to convert that rust. But you can see that there's all these like dark red spots, so that's not fully converted. So the issue is that we've got to figure out a way to convert that rust or we're going to have rust issues underneath our paint again and obviously we don't want that. So this is an experiment. 
We think that the issue is one of two things. The first might be that there's water that's still in the steel and the, because the water's coming through and out, um, it's not converting the rust properly. And the second potential issue is that there's more rust in there, especially in those pits. And because of that, we're not actually able to get under the rust to properly convert it. There's also one spot on the diesel tank that has not converted properly and we think that's because that has been contaminated with diesel because that's kind of the area that we had that spill that we found in it. And below that we might also have that issue. So we're going to do an experiment. Those areas have two coats of blue steel on like I said. We're going to take this wire brush and we're going to use the wire brush to try to work the blue steel into those spots the best that we can. Now this is something that was recommended to me by a friend of ours who was a commercial fisherman who worked on steel boats and repairing steel boats for, I don't know, 30 years or something, and he's still in contact with people that do this for a living, and this is something that was recommended. So we're gonna try that and see if we can get that paint in there, that blue steel in there well enough to convert the rest of that rust. And again, this is not an ideal solution. Like, ideally, we would be blasting everywhere that we see rust, and then we'd be painting it with the epoxy paint. And the epoxy paint is still going on top of the blue steel once we're done. It'd be nice if blue steel wasn't part of this process, but it is. There's just, this is the best way that we've found to do it for the spaces that we're in and the equipment that we have. And it's just going to be a process of seeing whether or not it works and how well it works. So there's one other thing that may potentially be our problem, and that is that the blue steel that we were using is about three years old. We bought it when we first bought the boat. <sighs> And that means that it might be too old and the acids in it might have started to degrade and it's just not working properly because the mixture's wrong. So because we're worried about that, we went out and bought a brand new one. Now they're $26, no, not 26, almost $29 plus taxes for this guy. And hopefully that does it, along with the prep work that we're doing that we talked about earlier. So. Only time will tell. Before putting any more coats of anything on, we scuffed up all the blue steel that I had already put on. This was in hopes that the new stuff would be able to penetrate better, as well as so that the epoxy paint going on later was able to properly adhere. We also used a dull blade on the oscillating tool to get into some of the rust that was left unconverted. Someone mentioned this in our comments a few videos ago, and it worked amazing, so thank you for your comment. I'm gonna show you guys the worst of this now. So. Underneath the sink here, that had two coats of the blue steel on it, and still, as you can see, did not convert a bunch of stuff. It's probably just because we didn't get enough rust off to begin with. <laughs> Logan's working just on the other side there. But Logan took the oscillating tool to it, as well as brushing it. We both brushed it, so that should hopefully be enough rust out of the way that the blue steel can run its magic now. Not unexpectedly, we ended up with almost a foot of snow yesterday and didn't make it to the boat because we couldn't get out of the driveway. And also you can't paint when it's below zero. Ooh, windy. So it's supposed to snow again today, but I'm at the boat and I'm gonna get everything prepped for paint so that hopefully tomorrow it's warm enough that I can come here and put the first coat of paint on and then maybe Sunday the second coat. But we still need to see if that new coat of blue steel worked. So let's get into the boat and check that out. All right, folks, it's the moment of truth. It would appear that the blue steel worked. Look at that. No more rust spots. Huh, that's pretty awesome. Same situation. There. Oh, there's still a bit of rust there, it looks like. Yep. Okay, so you can see here, this is a long, this is under the head. So, there's definitely some rust still underneath the blue steel. 
did not do a very good job of converting that at all and that's a third coat on there. It turns out that this was the same issue in a lot of places. My brushing in technique on top of the places that had two coats just didn't do the job. But it did seem to work a lot better on the areas that only had one coat of the older blue steel on them. But regardless of what was left for rust under the blue steel, we decided to go ahead with the epoxy paint, which contains its own rust inhibitors, and take our chances with rust returning in spots on some of the ribs. All right, I'm gonna show you guys a bit of what that first coat of paint looks like. So all the white stuff is where we had rust issues. Now we put a little bit more white paint on than needed, but you a pretty good idea. You can see the yellow spots too, or like where there was bare steel that got painted over. Um, it's like all up the sides. It's really hard to get the camera in there, so sorry about that. You can get a good idea. Pretty extensive. There too. In here. Good part of the bilge. There. Hmm. So it looks like all the yellow stuff is kind of where. It's where there's bare steel and probably where there's a little bit of rust that's being um, not necessarily converted, but like there's rust inhibitors in the paint that are probably working. Let's see there too. And also, I mean, some of that's like right on the edge of paint, but this bilge paint definitely reacts with other paints. But it's interesting. As you can see here in these spots, if you look at this spot right here, so this was not blasted. It was hit with um, with the needle gun, all the stuff that's around. But in the center here where it's white, that was blasted. So it's interesting to see how the paint reacts to the bare metal that hasn't been blasted. And then obviously this is on top of this gray paint here. So you can really tell like the paint went up to this edge and then this was bare steel, and then this was blasted. Yeah. So, pretty much all the bilge is going to be painted white today. We're going to put another coat over top of all of this. So that we have a nice white bilge, and we can see when we have problems from now on. Or see it easier anyway than with like, the five different paint coats. So. Yeah, in the rib there, these ones, same story. And in here, so it was under that rib there that we did that little bit of welding, which you guys saw a couple weeks ago, and the head. Also a disaster. <laughs> so much. Just so much paint gotta go on. All that that was under the shower, just a gigantic mess. Thanks so much for watching. 
We will be back in two weeks with another video, but if you would love to stay up to date with what we are doing, we would love to see you over on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. See you next time.